Hello, everybody. Hello, hello. Welcome back to Miss Cassidy Creates. I am Miss Cassidy here again with Baby Boy. Hey, buddy. What's up? He's very snuggly today. Hi, everybody. I'm very excited to do some learning with you today. We're going to do a little crafting. We're going to make our own puppets and we're going to talk about the history of puppets a little bit. I hope you're doing well this week. I know a lot of friends are experiencing crazy weather and other crazy things happening where you live. So wherever you are, I hope you are staying safe. I hope your family is staying safe. I hope nothing's too scary. I hope you're being brave when things are a little scary. And know that Miss Cassidy is thinking about you and sending all the good vibes I got as we deal with all of this crazy stuff going on. And I hope you have a fuzzy creature of some kind to give you kisses because baby boy's trying to give me a bath right now. And let me tell you, it's nice and calming. Excuse me, sir. Can I talk to my friends now? Can I talk to my friends now? All right. Hello, friends. Thanks for coming in. Hi, everybody. Just pulling up, uh, pulling up our video here on my computer so I can see all of your comments a little bit closer. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming. Hope you're doing well out there. Like I said, we are talking puppets today. We are going to go ahead and we're going to make some puppets. Here's what we're going to need to make some puppets. We're going to need some paper bags. Even if you only have one, that's totally great. That's all that you need. You can go ahead and make as many as you like, but we're going to need some paper bags. We're also going to need some glue, either a glue stick or some good old squeezy glue, whichever one you prefer. Uh, some construction paper, all different colors. And really, you can use a number of different decorating supplies for this uh, activity. But at the very least, you're going to need construction paper, brown paper bag, glue, scissors, and some wooden clothes pins. Oh, and then whatever your favorite coloring materials are. So you can see I've got my giant tub of coloring materials. So whatever your favorite decorative supplies are. I'm doing very well today. Thank you for asking. Thank you, thank you for asking. This is going to be our last live activity for a little while. We're gonna go on hiatus for the month of September. After today, we'll be back in action in August. So we'll give us a little time to get used to our school schedules and what's going on. I'm also taking a little vacation and I'm very excited for that, but I'm still gonna be posting some stuff. So all my grownups that are checking it out, keep visiting the page. We'll have some other cool things going on, but this is gonna be our last live activity until October. So let's see here. All right, we talked about what we're doing today. We talked about that we're going on hiatus for a little while. We talked about making sure that everybody out there is doing well and staying safe. I know there's a lot of crazy weather going on all over right now. So make sure you're taking good care of yourself and I hope you're staying safe and taking good care of your brain and your hearts and relaxing a little bit when things get a little scary and stressful. But let's go ahead and do a little relaxation. Oh, hold on one second, friends. One of my things fell down, and I don't want it to distract once we get to crafting. There we go. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. Today we are talking about puppets. Puppets are have been around since ancient Greece and even before. Some people think that we have been using puppets for over 4,000 years. Oh my goodness, that is a long time, isn't it? The first recorded use of puppets that we really know about is in ancient Greece, but in ancient Egypt, they also found beautiful ivory and wooden puppets buried in the uh, pyramids, and they saw hieroglyphics that show puppets being used. So it's very likely that puppetry started in Egypt, and then ancient Greece took a little bit of that and go went ahead and turned it into their own thing. And it has spread all over the world. There's different kinds of puppets in uh, Asia and uh, even in these large countries. Like you talk about Asia and Africa are big continents that bring a lot of countries together. All of these different countries have a lot of different puppetry traditions as well. Like India and the Philippines and Japan. Europe, Australia, Africa, and again, the big difference when we're talking about these large continents and all these little places that have their own unique kinds of puppetry. 
and they use puppets to tell stories, to perform rituals, to celebrate holidays. There's so many different kinds of puppets that can be used for so many different kinds of things. In fact, they think that there was puppetry happening before there were even actors getting up on stage to perform for people. So that's pretty cool. It's been around for so long. We're going to make two different kinds of puppets today. The first one we're going to make is a paper bag puppet. This is a nice, simple hand puppet. We'll put it on our hand. So go ahead and grab yourself a paper bag and think about what kind of puppet you might want to make. What kind of character are you trying to create? Uh, you can make it an animal. You can make it a person. You can make it a monster. You can make it... Uh, a character from your imagination, but what we're gonna do is if you stick your hand up in that paper bag and this little fold that's here, oh, hello baby boy's back, you're gonna stick your hand in that little fold and we use that to move around and make the mouth. So think about what kind of creature or person you wanna make out of this paper bag. Excuse me, baby boy, you are right in the way of where my crafting needs to happen. <laughs> So I think I'm going to make a bear. I'm going to make a bear out of my paper bag because my paper bag's already brown. Bears are one of my favorite animals. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a bear puppet. Now think about whatever kind of creature you're going to make, whether it's a human or whether it's a monster or whether it's an animal and what kind of things do you need? Well, if I'm making a bear, I need eyes. I need a mouth, I need their cute little ears, I need maybe a spot for their belly, and so I'm going to start cutting out some shapes and some other things. Where did my white paper go for their eyes? So I'm going to start by cutting out some eyes. I got my white paper here. A good trick for when you're trying to cut out multiples uh, of the same shape is to fold a piece of paper in half. So I'm going to make two eyeballs here, and I want them to look like they're kind of the same. So I'm going to fold that paper in half, like I've got a little book, uh, hot dog or hamburger fold, however way you want to do. And then I'm going to draw a great big circle. That might actually be a little too big, but that's okay. We can adjust it. Let's make it a little bit smaller. And then I'm going to take my scissors, and I'm going to cut around that circle. And because it's folded, it's going to automatically make two of them for me. So I don't have to cut one and then try to cut the other one or trace the other one to make it exact. So always making sure we're being nice and careful with our scissors. If you have a grown up nearby or some other uh, older friend that is better at scissors and you want to ask them for help, you go ahead. You can always ask for help. But if you are being trusted with the scissors and you've got good scissor skills, just make sure you're paying plenty of attention and you're staying focused on what you're doing. So I'm gonna cut out my pieces and before I glue them on, I wanna go ahead and I'm gonna cut them all out so I can place them where I want them. Now, I need a cute little bear nose too, right? That's one of my favorite things about bears is their cute little noses. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut out a nice big circle to be the nose and I'm gonna use another brown paper that looks a little bit different than my brown paper bag and I'm gonna go ahead and since I've got my eyes about here I want the nose to go about where my pinky is so I'm gonna cut that into more of an oval shape do you know what the difference is between a circle and an oval an oval is a little bit more stretched out like think if you took this circle and you could pull the sides and stretch it out a little bit that's how you would make an oval. And I only need one of these ovals, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut that out without folding my paper. Cutting nice and carefully. I like to draw my shapes before I cut them because I find that that really helps me keep them nice and clean and nice and tidy. But remember, whenever we're making art, friends, the point is not for it to be perfect. We don't need perfect. We just want it to be fun. That's really all we're looking for. We're looking to have a good time. Now I cut out a good oval here, but now as I hold it up against my bag, I'm not sure it's as different as I would like it to be. That blends in. Oh, actually, on camera that doesn't look so bad. I'm gonna keep it. See, there you go. And it's okay to change your mind sometimes. First I thought this wasn't gonna be the right color, but now I like it. 
What I do want though is I want it to be a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make another bigger oval and cut that out. So like I said, there's a lot of different kinds of puppets. Maybe you've played with some of them before. Maybe you've played with finger puppets or sock puppets, which are those little puppets that are made. A finger puppet can just go on the tips of your fingers and you go like this and use that. And it can be made of cloth or paper or even pipe cleaners, all different kinds. A sock puppet is when you use a sock to put it on your hand and talk that way. So those are two super easy puppets that you can make at home too. And uh, just like our paper bag puppets and our clothespin puppets. So those are some really easy hand puppets, right? And the uh, paper bag puppet we're making is a hand puppet as well. So now I've got my nose and I wanna add a little bit of a, that cute little black nose with that little black part inside. So I'm gonna draw a little nose on that oval I just made. And now I've got my eyes, almost, I need to finish the eyes. My eyes and my nose, what part do I need next? How about some ears? I love bear ears. I think they're my favorite part of the bear. They're so cute. I love bear ears. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that same trick that I did for the eyeballs where I take a piece of paper that's about two times as big as I need and I'm gonna fold it so that I can cut out two ears that look about the same and have the same shape and size. So I'm gonna make myself those cute little ears. I think I want it to be a little bit wider than that way. Yeah, there we go. So do you see that little, little half circle almost that I made there? I'm gonna cut those out and I'm gonna end up with two cute little bear ears for my bear. There we go, two cute little bear ears to go on top. Now, let's see, I've got eyes, I've got nose, and I've got ears. That might be as much as I need to cut out. Oh, I know what I'm gonna do. I wanna give my bear a little fluffy white belly. So to go right down in the middle here. So we've got the face up on that top flap, and then I'm gonna make this into a belly. And I'm gonna draw another big oval, but this time on my white paper. I'm gonna take my time cutting that out and then it'll be time to get to some gluing. What animal are you making? If you're making a cat, you probably have to do the same kind of things I'm doing. You gotta cut out ears. Uh, you gotta cut out a nose and some eyes. The ears might look a little different. They might be triangles instead of those nice little rounded ears we have. Maybe you're making a monster and you wanna give it four eyes and a horn and a crazy mouth. You can do that too if you want. Maybe you're making a unicorn and you've gotta give it a, uh, you gotta make yourself a sparkly pretty unicorn horn to go on top. Whatever kind of animal you're making or person, maybe you're making a person. You still need a lot of these same things. Ears, a mouth, <laughs> maybe some cool hair. You could use ribbon or something for hair if you're gonna make a human. All right, I've got all of my little pieces for my bear now. Can you see that as I'm placing them here? Yeah, I think you can. We've got our ears, our eyes, our nose, and our cute little belly. We're gonna add some other touches, but let's get started with some gluing. So I'm gonna start with the nose, and we wanna put that nose right at the bottom of where this flap is, because remember, we're gonna use that flap to make it look like our animal or our creature, whatever you're using, or whatever you're making is talking. So I'm gonna put a really nice light layer of my liquid glue. I normally like glue sticks more. We've talked about that before, but my glue sticks all dried up. So I'm gonna use a really, look how little glue I put on when I use that kind of glue. I don't use a lot at all. I'm gonna put that little nosy down. Then I'm gonna take the two eyeballs. I'm gonna put a little dot on the back. When we're using liquid glue, my favorite thing to say is a dot is a lot. You just need a little dot and then I kind of use the tip to spread it out a little bit, but I don't add any more. We've got the eyes. Put that belly on. Same thing, I'm gonna put squeeze the tube just a little bit and then use the tip to kind of spread it around. So I end up with a really nice light, you can't even probably see that on camera. 
put that down on the belly. And now for the ears, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna flip my bear upside down. I'm gonna put him face down and I'm gonna glue the ears to the back, to the very top back of the bag. And I'm gonna put just a little line, a little line of glue, stick those ears. And you've got yourself the beginnings of your animal. I'm gonna add into his eyes. I'm gonna give him a little, little pupil in his eyes. There we go, a cute little pupil on his eyeballs there. And then I wanna give him a little bear smile. So I'm drawing right below where that flap is. See how when I go like that, so it's right below it and I made that cute little smile. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some little paws and feet just by drawing on the bag itself. So I'm gonna draw a little bare feet down here. Maybe you're making a dragon with your, uh, with your paper bag and so you wanna give them some claws. You know what would be cool too? If you were making a dragon, you could glue some fire inside underneath this flap so that when you open that dragon's mouth as your puppet, it looks like it's shooting fire. That could be a cool idea. And then some side paws just coming down, holding his little bear belly. And there we go. We've got our first paper bag puppet and he's a cute little bear. So I'm gonna stick my hand in here and you wanna be careful because you're not gonna open the bag all the way. Remember, you wanna just tuck your little fingers into that front pouch and you can move it around so it opens its mouth. You can make it talk. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited you're learning about puppets today. Hi there, Mr. Bear, how are you? I was making him talk. Hi there, Mr. Bear, how are you today? Well, I'm doing all right, Miss Cassidy. I'm excited to learn more about puppets. Well, me too, Mr. Bear. <laughs> what do you think we should name our bear? Mm, maybe Barry the Bear. That could be good. Or Peanut Butter, because he's the color of peanut butter. I don't know. Let me know if you've got any good ideas for the names of my bear. And like I said, you can make all sorts of paper bag puppets. If you've got a bunch of paper bags like I do, you can go nuts and you can make a bunch of different kinds. You can make a whole puppet village out of paper bags and put on your very own puppet show. So there is our paper bag puppet, an excellent example of a hand puppet. We talked about finger puppets and sock puppets that are a kind of hand puppet. There's also a glove puppet where maybe you use all of your fingers in there rather than just this motion. Uh, there are some hand and glove puppets that actually need two people to control them because they're so large. There are puppets that are called marionettes, that they have the strings that hang down and people use the strings to make them move. There are rod puppets where they use a stick to move their arms around and to move their limbs. There are body puppets where a human will use their entire body uh, to fill up a puppet. These are also called carnival puppets. If you've ever been to a big parade where somebody's moving around in a puppet, that's probably a good example of a carnival or bo uh, body puppet. If you've ever seen the Lion King, the musical on stage, there's lots of amazing body puppets in the Lion King. And then of course, there's also shadow puppetry, which you could probably do in your own bedroom at night. Turn the lights out, put a flashlight on, and use your hand to make different shapes on the wall, and you can make that shadow look like different creatures and characters. There's all sorts of different kinds of puppetry, and like I said, it's all over the world. There's all sorts of different kinds of puppetry all over the world, so no matter where you're from, I bet you can learn a little bit about what puppetry is like from where you are. What kind of special things do they do where you live when they do puppets? Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a clothespin puppet. This is gonna be a smaller puppet. And we're gonna use that little pinching motion to be the mouth. So we can make uh, an emoji or another animal that maybe you want their mouth like this, like maybe a certain baby shark or mama shark or daddy shark, any of those. Uh, I am gonna maybe see, I'm gonna see if I can make two while we do this. I don't know, we might only have time for one. But I'm gonna try to make two and I'm gonna make an emoji first. So I'm gonna draw myself 
a circle and I'm going to take my clothespin and kind of put it on the paper here so I can get an idea. And if you pinch it, you can see where it opens. So I'm going to kind of look and go, okay, so based off of that, I am going to start my circle. I'm going to make my circle big enough that it can really be a nice, decent size. So if you look at that circle I just drew and I put the clothespin here, you can see it takes up about that part that opens up like that. So what emoji should I do? I want to do something where it has their mouth open. So maybe a great big smile, the big open mouth smile. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draw my emoji and give it some nice big eyes. And a nice open smile. You know what it kind of looks like? Have you ever had a smiley potato before? <laughs> Have you ever seen if you've gone out, you know, maybe in the, the cafeteria at your school or I think certain restaurants have them. They're like french fries, but they're shaped like a smiley face. I just made a smiley potato puppet. I guess that's what I'm making. It started as an emoji and turned into a smiley, <laughs> smiley potato. So again, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut out that whole shape right there. We're going to cut it in half in a minute, but first we're going to cut out the whole shape. Nice and carefully. Got my smiley potato out. And then I'm going to kind of look and I want that opening part right to happen in the mouth. So I'm not going to really cut it right across the middle. So if I cut it across the middle, that would be like at the nose level. I am going to cut about halfway through the mouth here. So you see that? I ended up with two separate pieces. I cut the mouth in half. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue that bottom part to the bottom part of my clothespin. Again, you might want to use a tad bit more glue for this, but not a lot still. We still don't need a bunch. You just want it to be enough and it's going to stick on there. Stick the bottom half on. Then I'll do the same thing. I put the glue on the top half of my clothespin. Take the top half of my little smiley face, smiley potato emoji. And just like that, meow, meow, meow. I'm a smiley potato. Dip me in some ketchup. <laughs> or whatever kind of creature you're going to make. An alligator would be great for this. A shark would be great for this. Um, uh, what else would be good? Fish would be great for this. Bye, baby boy. Um, there's all sorts of cool. You could make it profile. So this is looking straight on with our smiley face. But maybe you want to do the side of someone's face. So it looks like they're talking like this. There's a bunch of creative ways that you can use our clothespin puppet. Let's see, what time is it? We got time to do one more. We got time to do one more. You know what I'm gonna make? Since I made my bear hand puppet, I'm gonna make my other favorite animal for my clothespin puppet, which is a whale. I love whales. I think they're so cool. The thing I'm most excited for on my vacation is we're gonna, well, not most, but it's up there. I'm gonna go whale watching. I'm gonna get to go out on the ocean and hopefully see some whales. I can't wait. So I'm gonna make myself a nice little whale here. I'm gonna draw also, the reason I'm gonna do a whale is a whale is one of the few animals that I can really draw particularly well. And when I say particularly well, I mean, it's okay. But as we always say, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're not looking for perfect. We're just looking to have fun. So I'm drawing up my whale here and I'm going to cut it out. And we're going to do the same thing. Remember, we want to think about where we would want that mouth of our clothespin to go. So once I cut it out, oh, let me add a cute little, cute little eyeball. And then we're going to cut it out. I made this one a lot bigger than our smiley potato. We'll see if it works. I think it will. Cutting out my beautiful whale. Have you ever seen a whale before? I saw one a long time ago when I was uh, on a trip to Alaska, but I didn't get to see it very up close. And I'm hopeful that on this trip, I'm going to get to be a little bit closer and see them. I'm so excited. 
you haven't seen a whale before, have you seen your favorite animal? Maybe you're lucky and your favorite animal is a cat or a dog or something you have in your house. And let's be honest, we know my real favorite animals are the animals I live with. But my other favorite animals that I can't have as a pet, no matter how many times I ask, are the whales and the bears. So there we go. We got a cute little whale here. And I want to make sure that I'm putting that line right where I want the clothespin to go, which is going to be a little bit lower. And I'm not going to cut, I'm going to cut, whoop, runaway pencil or a uh, pen here, marker. So I drew myself a little bit of a line, but I'm going to cut all the way across. So I'm cutting a long line all the way down to the tail. I cut my little whale, ha, huh? cut the whale by the tail in half like that. Take another clothespin. Where'd it go? I know I have one more. There it is. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go ahead and for this one, since it's so big and it's going to take up the rest of the clothespin, I'm still just probably going to put glue on this front part. Just the part that opens and closes. Put that down. Put some more glue on the bottom. Push it down. It's going to be a little bit delicate because it's that fresh glue. But now you've got your whale too. Oh, a whale of a tail of a tail of a whale. <laughs> so there you go. We've got a couple different. Oh, my smiley potato. I didn't put it down carefully enough. It came apart a little bit. So we've got a smiley potato, accidental smiley potato, clothespin puppet. We've got a whale clothespin puppet. We've got Barry Peanut Butter the Bear, whatever we want to name him, talking like that. And then I actually want to show you, I made two special puppets before we started today. The first one I want to show you is a little tiny, oh, where'd it go? Little tiny baby boy puppet. I made a little baby boy puppet, including his little snaggle tooth, his one snaggle tooth. Meow, meow, meow. I am baby boy and I get on Miss Cassidy's stuff all the time. <laughs> so I made a cute little baby boy puppet. And of course, if I was going to have a baby boy puppet, I also had to make a Miss Cassidy puppet. Whoa! <laughs> so I went ahead and I made myself with my yellow glasses, my space buns, my, my head scarf, and my overalls, the trusty overalls. So now I've got Miss Cassidy and baby boy in puppet form. <laughs> to join Barry the Bear and Whaley the Whale and Smiley Potato Puppet. We got a whole family of puppets. How about you? What kind of puppets did you create? Did you make yourself? If you haven't made yourself yet, that can be your next one. You can make your own puppet. And you see what I did here? I made my bottom lip underneath and then my top lip on top. So that way it looks like I'm talking. So friends, I hope you had a good time. As always, if you've taken any pictures of your little learner making their own puppets, you want to share those with me, I would love to see them. Tag us at Miss Cassidy Creates with all of your amazing creations. Uh, like I said, we're going to be taking a little September hiatus. So I hope if you are heading back to school, it goes wonderfully. If you are just starting to get ready to go back to school, whether you're homeschooled or you're going to preschool or kindergarten or middle school, whatever you're doing to get started learning in the fall, I hope you are feeling refreshed and ready to go. I hope you're staying safe wherever you are with all the crazy weather going on around us. And I can't wait to be back with you here in October. Let me know what kind of activities you want to do when we get to fall. I hope you have a wonderful September. I hope you learn lots of new stuff. I hope you keep on being yourself and I will see you soon. Bye friends. Have a good one. Bye. See ya.